Hi divers and welcome back to another scuba diving accident reaction video and today we're reacting to Diver Panic. That's actually the whole title, nothing more. <laughs> so let's see how this pans out. Obviously for Diver Panic to happen, the first thing needs to be some discomfort which persists for a long time, which after that persisting for a while builds up to stress and as that stress levels increase and increase and increase, that's what leads to a panic and then that potentially can lead to an accident if not handled properly, if things go wrong, that's where we have accidents. So this might not be an actual accident video, it might just be more of a panic and it gets resolved. We're just gonna have to wait and see. Also guys, we're just gonna watch this whole video all the way through without pausing. I'm gonna then give my thoughts and feedback and then I'm gonna watch it a second time with kind of pausing and giving deeper analysis and breaking down what's actually happening and what could have been done better or avoided or if there's actually any good things, I wanna point them out in the video there. And as always with these kind of videos, it's not to be mean to the divers who are having these problems, it's to use it as a case study so we can learn from it and avoid having these accidents ourselves. Without the way guys, let's jump into the video. Okay. So he's making contact, which is always good if there's a problem potentially. Time to watch him. So it looks like there's a clearing issue. Maybe they've got a problem, the mask's got water in it. Quite a basic problem, so this could be an open water dive. But contact's good. If someone's having a problem, by the way, making contact, we can see his hands doing right there is really, really good. Stop. Look, look at me. They're a little bit higher, so again, so he's doing a demonstration right now. So if they are struggling, it's a good idea to do a demonstration back. That's quite a quick demonstration, for my opinion, and not really <laughs> doing much. It's just kind of flood, quick clear. Whereas I would like to do it a lot slower than that. But yeah, going to get them to do it properly now. Still got water in the mask. Looks like a little bit there. So this might be open water dive one, where they actually need to do a partial mask clear in open water. They're breathing out the regulator, but they're not using their nose. If you look where the bubbles are coming from. So making contact is good if you see the struggling bit. So the point out there's a little bit of water still in the mask, I think. If not fully flooded, maybe even at this point. So they're letting water go into the mask, they're flooding it. So they should have tilted the head down first, it makes it a lot easier if you tilt your head down and then do the ex um, exhale out your nose. So her breathing's getting quite fast now, you can see how much bubbles and stuff, yeah. She's not looking very comfortable at all now. So if I was him, I tried to get, get her breathing looked after instead of like to keep time to stop, you should really focus on trying to get to breathe. Contact's good though. She wants to go up, she's doing the thing, so she's really, really stressing right now. I think here we really could try and regulate the breathing better. Because he keeps having to stop rather than other things, really. Okay, this is good though. Locking in hands if there's a problem is a good thing to do. Stop some flailing and stuff, and you can control them better. Yeah, and then start to do the breathing. Okay, I would have continued the breathing until you got to a happy state there, but it's fine. So if it is the math skill, he's gone on to do the students now. Instead of trying to overwhelm someone's student who's not getting it, yeah. Do you give it a go now? Get, so then she can watch other people doing it and have a better idea. Clear, looks pretty clear now. Yeah, so this is a lot better though. If that, so then go on to the next guy, get him to do the skill, make contact. You don't have to make contact by the way for the skill, but it's just a good idea just in case you think the students are not so good. Don't like how the SPG is hanging loose, it should have been clipped on somewhere, probably lower. I don't know why he's getting to look at that. The other diver, by the way, who was looking a bit is a bit higher again. I would have paid a bit more mind to just keep checking back at them between both divers um, because they could have panicked still. I don't think he probably got them under control before moving on to the other divers. Okay, he's not doing math skills. Okay, <laughs> and the cameraman's distracted by the fish now. <laughs> oh dear, that's funny. A lot of wading, so they definitely feel open water. I feel like this is open water dive one, if I'm going to guess. Yeah, wading with the hands still. And they're very vertical. I didn't point out earlier, but everyone's basically vertical, which isn't great. They should be in trim. Even when doing skills like this, being in trim is a good, just a good habit to be in, instead of just being fully vertical. And that's the video. So that realistically, in my opinion, was just someone struggling to do math skills, and they got a little bit overwhelmed. Um, all of the things considered, I think the instructor does a fairly good job of actually with that. Um, for anyone who's a non-diver watching this and like wondering what's going on, um, basically water can get into the mask it can, from bad fitting mask or from certain things during the dive. You might, um, if you laugh a bit, it's in the smile, it can cause wrinkles in the bottom of the mask and the mask obviously lets water in. So it's an important skill to know how to clear your mask. And it's really easy done. Say so a little bit of pressure on your mask, 
looking down, tilt your head up with emotion when you're exhaling, and it's all done. Making contact is obviously a good thing to do if you see someone is struggling a bit. Um, getting to do a demonstration back to them if they're not fully getting it is a good idea. Although with mask skills, it's kind of a funny one because if the mask is fully flooded, they're gonna have blood vision, so they're not gonna be able to see you properly to do a demonstration quite as well. But it's just one of those. From what I can see though, the student was breathing out a lot from their mouth instead of from their nose, which is a common mistake. I had the same mistake when I was an open water diver myself and I was learning how to scuba dive because mouth breathing to me just wasn't natural. I had to really think about breathing in and out from my mouth, which might sound super weird to some people, like how is that hard? But trust me, it's really weird for some divers and then to switch them to your nose can be a bit confusing. And one of the issues that some times people do is that they mix up their nose with their mouth. So they get the things mixed up what they should do. So instead of inhaling from the mouth and exhale from the nose, they try and inhale from their nose. They start choking because it ought to see what water brushes up their nose, has a little bit of a burning sensation actually. And then it could cause them to panic and like whoa and they don't do things quite properly so that can be sometimes one of the issues that arises i don't think that was the case here but just keep in mind that you can sometimes accidentally do the wrong motion there but it just takes a little bit of time some students get faster than others some people just get straight away some divers do not so quick wardrobe change for the analysis um just because i wanted to re-record it because i missed out some quite key points in my opinion so to give you guys full value, I thought I'd do this instead of doing a lazy edit, and that's why I'm looking a little bit different right now. But yeah, let's jump into the analysis. So starting straight off the bat, actually, we can see straight away in this video before even pressing play, the instructor is actually holding on to the student straight away. Now, when I first looked at the video, I thought this was actually a really good idea to do because if the student's in distress, if they have signs of panic or potentially happening, it's a good idea to make contact so you can control the student closing the gap between you and them, making it easy to make eye contact with them. And if it need to, it makes it quicker for you to act. If you need to grab their hands or take action in any way to get them into control and avoid them actually having a panic, which could turn to an accident. So you can kind of avoid it from happening. However, we know right now the student actually isn't having a panic just yet in the video. And also they are just doing skills, which is the partial mass clear, which is an assumption I'm making from the fact that we see the second student later in the video, just do a partial mask clear. It wasn't a fully flooded mask with a full mask clear, it was just a partial one, what they did. And the instructor seemed to be fine with that. So that's the assumption I'm making at the moment with that. So why are they making contact then? This is sometimes what some instructors will do just because it makes the skill a bit easier to do. Firstly, from their perspective, it allows the students to stay close to them and not have to worry about them drifting off or going off in a weird way while trying to do the skill. And also allows them to control the buoyancy for them, making the skill easier for them. Personally though, I don't love that. I would rather you try and let the student do a neutral buoyancy first, and then if they can't do that, they accidentally float up, which is very common when any diver is doing any task floating, which is like a skill or objective. They subconsciously hold their breath slightly with every inhale, which causes them to float up a little bit more and more as it goes on. And obviously that's not great. It has a risk of lung over expansion injury, if not actually dealt with properly. So them actually making contact is kind of cheating that situation from avoiding it from happening. They're just doing that, making contact so they control the buoyancy for them. So they can just focus purely on the skill at hand. I personally would like to see them just try doing neutral buoyancy. If it goes wrong, then you can make contact afterwards. We don't know from when the clip started though, that might've been the case. And then because they were struggling with the skill, that's why he's made contacts now. A bit unclear, but just something I would personally like to mention on the side of things. However, on the counterpoint of that, this skill, the partial mass clear, which signals that by the way, is typically done either on the confined pool session, number one, and or the open water dive, number one, on the open water course. So this is very early for starts of the course, very, very early days. So I think I can give a bit more slack from them actually doing this sort of thing as a diver, probably not the most familiar with scuba diving technique, not have the best points to control, and it's something they can work on during the actual course itself. So I don't hate this completely. Just want to point out though, the contact might not be fully necessary. But again, we only know from when the clip starts that they're always making contact. So, yeah. So the instructor does like a little demo back to them, clearly point out what the problem he thinks is with the ish diver. From what I can tell here, he's saying that you're not putting enough pressure on top of the mask and he's it just one-handed way. I personally don't love how he does this. It's very, very sloppy. I, if I was him, what I would actually do is the remember signal. It's, it's a very good signal. If you think a student's not doing something right, go remember, and then you show them the action of doing wrong. So in this situation, you'd be like, remember, apply pressure to the top of the mask. It's one of the things I think is also very lazy, the fact he's just doing it one hand and also doing it very fast. It's not good demonstration skills. As an instructor, you want to be very big, exaggerated hand gestures. You don't want to just do like a, look, that's very, very lazy. 
That's why you do these over top gestures because it's very clear then what are you doing? It's not very good in my opinion, this demonstration. I don't love it realistically, um, but yeah. I also hate this part here then. He basically just blanks at them. The student thinks they complete the skill and he just doesn't give any signal. He just looks away. If you think they've done it correctly, give them the okay, and then give them some positive reinforcements. It's actually a requirement by way that instructors give positive reinforcements when you complete a skill. That's the often the high five, it could be a fist pump, it could be giving them a shaka. Something to make them feel good. Even if you think this is a very basic and mundane skill, it's really good to give some encouragement to the students, make them feel good about accomplishing this very minor skills. These things make people feel really good during the course. And remember, scuba diving is all about having a good experience and making the course feel really positive for them is actually a very important part of it. So the fact he just blanks them here is very, very bad. Also, if you're not happy with the skill they're doing, you'd be like, okay, remember, and then the correction, which you should have done, and then tell them to repeat. This signal means to repeat. Don't just ignore them though and kind of drift off. I don't know why he does this. It's very, very weird. And it kind of just leaves the student in limbo like, did I do the skill? Did I not do the skill? Do you want me to repeat? Do you not want me to repeat? It's a bit weird and I don't love it personally. I d it's gonna be a bit of a nitpick, but him going, you watch me like that, I do not love. So I talked before about how he's not got the best demonstration skills. I think as well, you've got all digits in your hand. This is where I like to make you watch me a lot better and clearer by going, you watch me. Use it so that each signal is very distinctively different from the other to make it very clear what you're doing. Also do it slower than he does it. Sometimes the way I still like to think about it is though, you, big white elephant, watch, big white elephant, me, big white elephant. If you're American, you might want to say Mississippi, or you might want to count one, two. This, one, two, mm, don't want two. Whatever works for you, but it's really important to have a pause there so people can process what actually you're saying. If you do it too quickly, like, it's too fast, and it's very important for instructors to have it very slowed down, very clear, and very exaggerated. And it's not, it's one of the weak parts of this. So as I said then, the demonstration, very fast, very sloppy. I do not love it. Personally, I don't love the whole mask flooding like this way, by the way. I think it's not a very controlled way of getting how much water in. I think it's fine for a full mask flood, or it's fine for the mask removing in place. If you want to flood the mask first before taking the mask off and then on again, that's fine. But for the partial one, which is just a little bit of water at the bottom, I'm all about peeling the corner up and just let it control it in that way, because that way you avoid water going in the eyes. And it's less jarring for having a sudden rush of water going into your face. If you do want to like flood your mask that way, by the way, it's a good idea to close your eyes preemptively so no water goes into your eyes. But you have the time you can let the water go around your face and around your nose and just feel it there before opening your eyes and getting get accustomed to it, water going in your eyes as well. Just so you have a bit more time to acclimatize to it instead of having a sudden rush of discomfort. Because the skill for a lot of people can be feel very uncomfortable. So you can have a rush of discomfort, which can cause a rush of stress going to them. And again, this is where sometimes random panics happen. So personally, I don't love him demonstrating it like that. Definitely still a nitpick, I will say. And definitely you can do the skill that way. But for just my own experience, I know people have issues more so when you do flood your mask like that. And the single hand clear at this point is unnecessary. He's not making contact with students. He has both hands free. Do it properly with the hands, but also do a proper full demonstration. Go through all the steps. You watch me, mask clear. First step, we're going to look down. Second step, breathe in. Third step, exhale out the nose. Fourth step, look up, wiggle the mask. Look down, is it all clear? Okay, that's a full, <laughs> that's a full demonstration. Making sure it's very really clear, making sure we're pointing out all the steps involved in it. Do it really, really simply. And he just doesn't do that. It's just a very, very lazy one, as if he's just quickly, oh, I've got water in my mask. Oof. I don't love how he demonstrates this here. It's not a good demonstration. It doesn't really achieve much for the student. And it's no wonder the student isn't really getting it when you give them demonstrations which are rushed. Because one of the issues often I find with people who are doing this math skills and are having trouble with it, they don't like the feeling of water on their face, so they're rushing the skill. So if you see you rushing the skill, they are going to also rush the skill. If you, as an instructor, I think you should show that you're happy with the discomfort. As I say, flood the mask and just show yourself with it, having a few breaths before you start the skill, just with water around your face, open your eyes with the water in there, 
showing you that it's completely fine. Water on my face, not dangerous, it's completely fine. Then start the skill and do it very slowly to show there's no rush to get the skill done. It's absolutely fine. If you rush a skill though, the students are also going to mimic you doing so. So you're leading by a bad example here. And that's why I do not love his demonstrations. So I'm personally not sure what the actual student issue was. But it isn't quite clear enough what it is. But this is where it just instructs that you're kind of going to troubleshoot mode and try and figure out. The most important thing to do is the exhale out the nose. That's going to help you clear the mask. And even if you don't do the other things like putting pressure on top of the mask or the full on head tilt, it's still going to be actually quite effective at clearing the mask just by doing a good exhale out the nose. So usually if someone's not able to clear out the mask, it's usually because they're breathing out their mouth slightly or not properly enough out their nose. Again, sometimes it can be because they have a cold during the course, which is why you don't dive with a cold. It's one of the extra reasons why not, because you can't clear a mask properly if you're doing that case. Or you might sneeze and have snot in there, which is gross, <laughs> but not dangerous, it's just a bit gross. But simply put, if you can't exhale out your nose properly, this is going to cause you not to be able to actually clear the mask. If it's still doing it, but you've still got a little bit of water each time in there, you're not doing the pressure properly at the top. Sometimes this is because you put too much. So you see the second diver later in the clip, he lifts the mask way too much off the net, his face. You only want a small bit, which is why you often see demonstrated with just two fingers. This is because it makes a small little gap at the bottom, helping the water, helping the water vent out when you exhale out your nose. That's what the whole putting pressure on top of the mask is for there, to help it vent out. However, if you lift the mask fully off your face too much, you just let a more water to go in there. So you see the second diver in the video, he actually has to do the skill twice because there's still some water in there, which probably could have been avoided if he didn't lift the mask off his face and so just applied a little bit of pressure on top of the mask. That way he would have entered it properly and not had to repeat the skill. And then the third thing which could go wrong is basically not tilting the head enough. Really exaggerate it, head fully down into the actual chest and then tilt it all the way up and even give it a wiggle side to side as it can sometimes get trapped in the corners. Those are the three things you should be looking at as an instructor to try and figure out, are they not clearing? If there's something else beyond that, there may be some things like the mask is on too tight, other things like that potentially could be the issue. But there's the kind of things you're looking out for and you kind of then have to kind of, as a, you're in troubleshoot mode to figure it out. I personally can't figure out here. I'm assuming that she's just not using the XL properly from her nose, but it's a bit unclear in the footage, I'm going to be honest. So if you think you can see it, please feel free to leave a comment down below to explain what you think actually is going on here, why she can't do the skill properly, and why instructor keeps getting to repeat the skill over and over again. Okay, so let's jump into the panic part. So obviously, keep in mind at this point, he, she's had to repeat the skill several times. She might have also done the skill beforehand, before the clip even started. So there's been a lot of time now where she's had water in her face, in her eyes. There's going to be lots of discomfort and lots of stress building up in them. So it's no wonder they are feeling a bit more anxious. And you can see it straight away, when they do go to attempt the skill this final time, they rush the skill big time. They flood the mask and instantly go straight into the thing. I, I was instructed at this point, I think she should give her more time to catch her breath. You could have gone to the other student first and just let them do the demonstration and give them a go and then come back to her after she's seen them successfully do it to build her confidence. I think just keep repeating them again over and over on this one student wasn't the best idea here. But as you can see straight away after she, her head comes back down again, she is instantly flapping her arms. She's showing signs of panic. I think it's also from how she goes and grabs the regulator. I think at some point either during the skill or after that skill initial part, she inhales it accidentally through her nose. This will obviously have a burning sensation, but also can cause you to start choking a little bit on water in the actual in your mouth. And that's why she was holding the regulator to keep the regulator in place. I think that's the situation. Personally, I think he could have stepped in a little bit faster here. He's, as soon as you see the arms flapping, he sees that, shows signs of panic, just take control of the situation. I know some structures would be like, no, I'm just gonna tell them to stop, make eye contact with them, try to get them to stay their breathing, and that way, let them kind of fix the problem for themselves. Personally though, if I see some panicking, I know how quickly these things can escalate into a full-on blown accident. So I think he could have definitely stepped in sooner. But thankfully, she does kind of re regain control eventually. And once she kind of moves her arms away from her actual regulator, she's doing signals and stuff, and he just calms her down, stops. He does take control by grabbing the hands. I just think he could have done a little bit sooner personally here. So after he gets her back under control, one of the things I think he should have done is check the SPG. This is the thing you always taught even in the rescue course is that if someone has a panic, check the SPG gauge to see how much pressure they have remaining. The simple reason for that is you don't know how much they might exert. You saw her rapid breathing during the panic you know they might have burnt a bit more air. Just let you know for dive planning as an instructor, or even as a guide even, just to know what actually you are working with and if you might have to call the dive sooner than later because they have less pressure than you expect them to have at certain points. I also feel like after he does get them under control, get the breathing sorted out first. 
coaching through, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, and get them some actual breathing before moving on to the other students. I think you should make sure they are actually under control. You've also got some lines available to them. So if you have that available, get them to rest on the line, hold onto the line. Yeah, I think they also got a sandy bottom there near the bottom. I don't think it's also fine here to just get them to kneel down on the bottom if you want them to catch their breath and just rest. That's completely fine too. You can't just ignore them afterwards to work on some other students. And you notice during the back in the background, she does start floating up a little bit and it's not good. So this is one of my big issues here that he just completely ignores her. I don't love about this situation here. As I always mentioned before, he lifts his mask way too much of his face. I find this very peculiar by the way that both students do that. By the way, they're doing this, even an instructor does this. So I don't know if he briefed it incorrectly on the surface. I don't know if they ha have a strange reason why they think they have to do this, but it just suggests maybe they weren't briefed properly on the surface. So it was a bit awry, because it's strange that he keeps demonstrating it like this, but they keep choosing to do it like this. And I say, that has a lot of problems how they do that because you just want the pressure only at the top and you only want a little bit of pressure. They're lifting the mask way too far off the face and it allows more water to go in there when they're trying to clear the mask. And I say, that's why I think he has to repeat the skill because he didn't clear effectively because he let too much water in by lifting the mask too far away from his face. I mentioned during the actual reaction, none of them are in trim, they're all vertical, not great. This should be obviously in trim position. It's a good thing to start for me getting that nice horizontal position. There's no reason for them to be vertical to do this skill. And the last diver, I really have no clue what's going on with this guy. Firstly, his SPG is hanging loose. It should be clipped onto the VCD or attached to one of the pockets somehow, just so it's not hanging loose, so it's not an entanglement hazard or not a hazard that can damage the reef in any way. Although it seems to be a sandy bottom here, but you get my meaning. It's not good that it's hanging loose and not proper. I don't know why the instructor moves it over his shoulder. That's never a place to put the SPG. It's just really weird. And you can also notice that his LPI is also not strapped on properly. There's usually a bit of Velcro, which can secure that too. So that's hanging loose. So it also suggests again that there might be issues on the service that they didn't set up properly. They're a bit lazy. They kind of rush things because that diver does not look like he's set up properly at all. And that is a bit of a red flag for me as well as the instructor. I say, on the whole though, I say, instructor, I don't love his teaching side of things, but I think when it came to the panic, he was very calm and collected and did take control of the situation. Well, maybe a little bit sooner could have been there, but you kind of split in hairs at that point. But if you think I did miss anything else in this video, please leave a comment down below, add more value to this video and let people know how to improve as divers because it's really helpful. And if you found this video helpful and enjoyable in any way, please give it a like. It helps me out a ton, but help other divers find this video too. And if you want to see more from myself, now a ton, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Mum's at 500 subscribers, which is an awesome milestone to be reaching. I'm so hyped for that. So if you could help us get to there and join the Narcs family, I'd love to see it, guys. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notified when I post my next video. Anyway, divers, I hope you have an awesome and safe dives. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.